Hey gang, welcome back. Uh, this is episode three of my acoustic guitar build. And we're uh, making a little progress here. Uh, you watched me on the first two episodes. I uh, prepared the sides in the back as well as the soundboard and we bent the sides. And on this episode, I will be taking the sides out of the bender they're going to be put in the mold and we are going to permanently attach them together using the neck block, the tail block and uh, glue all that up and uh, hopefully get all that done without causing a big mess. <laughs> so, um, all right, enough of my talking. Let's get started. I want to focus on cutting the sides here to length. And what I've done is my mold is able to be separated. Um, it's just a two-part mold with this piece of plywood here that screws into each half and allows me to separate it. And uh, I have a, a dowel, a locating pin almost, uh, a dowel that helps me line this up when I'm putting everything back together. But what I've done is I've separated it and clamp, it's clamped in here well, and it, I use the table saw table as uh, a flat surface where I made sure that uh, it was completely flat against the table saw uh, all the way around. So I knew it was uh, flat inside my mold. I clamped it in good, and I clamped in here a block, a little block that will help me reinforce uh, the side because as it sticks up uh, proud of the mold uh, these are only 85 thousandths thick so it's a little flimsy obviously I don't want to split it when I'm cutting it so I've got this uh, block clamped in here to help support the workpiece as I cut it and I'm just going to use uh, like a really small dovetail saw and just cut it right along uh, the seam here in the mold. That's roughly half, halfway uh, across. side. Alright, I've got a slightly different approach to cutting this side. I'm going to try and cut it from uh, from this side this time. I have it clamped with some supporting blocks behind it and I'm just going to transfer a line to the front and cut it straight down. We'll see what happens. One side's done. Tomorrow I'll take the other side out of the mold and 
trim it off as well reattach both sides of the mold and we'll start on the next step all right it's been about two hours and it's still about 130 degrees and it's pretty warm to the touch still so so this has to sit overnight and tomorrow i'll take it out of this mold i'll put it into the form as i did with the other one and we will work on trimming it to length and gluing the heel and neck blocks. So, all right. All right, uh, now we're gonna focus on making the heel block and the uh, end block or tail block. So let's look at, uh, let's take a look at the plans. I'm gonna make these blocks out of mahogany, some pieces that I have and I'll have to glue them up to the correct thickness but let's take a look at the plans okay um, you can see right here this is the uh, the end block or tail block and it gives you uh, what the dimensions should be so it wants it to be uh, three uh, seven eighths thick by three and a quarter inch wide and since the bottom of the guitar side will be four and seven eighths thick, that's how high we will make uh, that block. And same thing for the top. The top of the sides are three and seven eighths and the dimensions on the plan call for, um, again, a mahogany block, uh, inch and a quarter by two and three quarters. So let's go ahead and cut up those pieces. Uh, we'll get them glued up. Uh, we'll cut them the rough size, we'll get them glued up, and uh, when the glue dries, we will cut them to size. All right, the first dimension is three and a quarter inches. That is the same width for both blocks. We'll cut that first. So the thickness needs to be, tail block is 7 eighths thickness. And I'm not quite at 7 eighths here. We are 3 quarters. So I'm going to have to glue two pieces up here. size in terms of thickness so after I got a these came from a table uh, like a leaf out of a table this mahogany so it has some uh, you know polyurethane finish on it so I'm gonna sand that off over at the belt sander and then we'll glue this up and move on to the next block Works pretty well. Uh, takes the finish right off. So we are going to glue these together, uh, and this will be the tail block essentially. It's a little bit oversized, but the rough dimensions will be four and seven eighths, three and a quarter wide, and we'll uh, rip it down to seven eighths. So let's cut the 
other block while we have all the wood out. Right now we've got oh, about an inch and nine sixteenths, and we need to get it at. Plants call for an inch and three eighths. All right, just like the other blocks, we need to take off uh, the finish. This is what it looks like beforehand. We'll use the belt sander once again. Alright, so I got my two sets of blocks, let's glue them up. And clean up as much glue, squeeze out as we can now. Okay, so that's the first one. We'll set that to the side to cook. And you can never have enough clamps. There. Wipe some of this off. All right, set that off to cook. All right, so I want to work on uh, making a template here to uh, taper the sides of uh, the guitar. So. <clears throat> As I've mentioned before, the plans call for uh, at the neck, the sides to be three and seven eighths high. And at the tail block end of the sides, uh, the plans call for four and seven eighths. So what I think I'm gonna do is because I don't wanna take the sides out of the mold that I have them in, uh, in order to taper them or even to, to mark them up, I'm just gonna make a template um, out of paper and let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I got half of the mold here. What I've done is I've taken a piece of uh, just some binding tape and uh, I've taped it along the inside and just made a couple of marks right at the edge of the form uh, to indicate where the end of each side is. And then what I'm gonna do is take this and transfer those lines to some paper uh, and then I will 
mark out the taper on the piece of paper, cut that out. We'll lay that up against the side and mark it so we know where to uh, taper the sides. So let's go ahead and do that. Seven eighths. Transfer the end. Okay, that marks the end. And this will be three and seven eighths. Measure twice. No, that looks good. Okay. <clears throat> So all we have to do is connect these lines using a straight edge. Cut that out with some scissors. There it is tapered from one end to the other. So we will just we'll just uh, tape this right on to the side while it's in the mold and mark that with a pencil and then we'll, we'll taper it from there. All right, these have been cooking for a few hours. So let's take them out of the clamps. take these down to their finished dimension. Just gonna clean these up on the sander. All right. Now, one thing I want to show you on the plans is you can see they have uh, like a chamfer on each corner. So I'm gonna take those measurements and make that chamfer as well. Worked pretty well. You can see. I was able to take that off. It turned out being about 15 degrees. All right. Next step, we glue them on. Bring back. <clears throat> so let's put it in the other half of its mold and we'll trim it to size. Now 
just going to trim it off flush uh, with the end of the mold. All right, now what we want to do is reconnect our two mold halves. And I'm simply going to put the one empty half connected back and reattach it with the screws. All right, now we will Insert the other half, the other side rather, to this side of the mold. Now I have these uh, clamping calls that fit into the jig and I use these turnbuckles to spread them out. And I'm it's one thing I going to do now is get this all clamped in here tight and see what kind of adjustments need to be made. So once you cinch these these calls down, it, it'll conform to the mold really well and you'll see what kind of trimming you actually have to do. These calls were simply the scrap that came out of uh, originally making this mold. Alright, now you can see with, get you a closer look, with the turnbuckles in there, uh, they spread it out nicely. And the joints are need some tweaking. The seams at the neck and the heel, or the tail rather. So I'll work on that. I'm gonna use a combination of chisels and sandpaper and get those uh, seams just just right. All right, <clears throat> well, that took a while, but let's see if I can get you a good shot here. That joint there. This joint here. So now, before I can glue these, uh, the heel block and the neck block on, uh, I have to radius the back side of it. So, because as you can see, where they where they glue on to the to the guitar sides, there's a slight radius uh, in this area. Uh, it's a little. Let me get the camera a little closer. So you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see, even with uh, 
when I pull it tight, you can see there's a gap there. Okay, so it's like that on both the top and the bottom. So the easiest way, uh, the easiest way to get that gap uh, is just to use the mold itself as a, uh, I guess as a template to, to, uh, to sand that radius. Let me show you what I mean. What we're going to basically do is we'll take the sides out of the mold real quick. Remove the calls. Set these off to the side. I'm just going to take some... Uh, some adhesive backed sandpaper. All right, so that sandpaper will, and we'll just sand away. That's pretty good. That is good. So I'll set the mold aside. While the sides are out of the mold, I want to take this opportunity to trace the taper. Back this up a bit. So the sides will have a taper three and seven eighths to four and seven eighths. So you saw I had that made this uh, template not too long ago. I'm just going to trace it while it's out of the mold. And before I start gluing blocks on and side supports, things like that, I'm going to get this in here and trace it. All right, now that this, the taper is marked, uh, we can put everything back in the mold now and glue the blocks. I find it's easiest to clamp the bout. <clears throat> Get these bouts clamped just to get everything lined up. All right, <clears throat> so the sides are back in the mold and had a little mishap here. I'm pretty bummed out. Uh, the top of the one side split on me, but uh, I'm gonna stay positive and I'm going to glue this and this is gonna work out. I'm just, uh, I'm not, 
I'm not gonna let this sideline me here, so. Yeah, well, it is what it is, so. I'm gonna start by gluing that top first. And basically, you know, we're gonna start by just uh, putting glue in that split Get that in there and then just gluing the block right in, right on top of it. Really, I don't think it's quite the end of the world. But. Always make sure, make sure you get plenty of glue. And we want to spread this out well. Lots of glue squeeze out here. All right, <clears throat> I gotta get, take care of this glue squeeze out. I like using my six inch rule. Scraping that out of there. I think I'm gonna try to get a little more glue into that joint. Using my suction cups.
All right, we gotta get one more clamp in there. That old stupid phrase, you can't have enough clamps. I mean, it is kind of true. All right. Bunch of clamps. And let's see if I can get you a good look. Cleaned up as much as the glue squeeze out as I could on both sides. So you can see it's a little proud. The sides are a little proud of the blocks on the, the back side of the guitar. And that's okay because that's where the, it's going to be tapered. Uh, I'll be trimming that a little bit anyways for the taper. And uh, when I radius the sides for the arch top and the arch back, uh, some of that material will be removed because of that as well. The split that I was talking about was right in this region. I've got glue in there. I've got it clamped. It's lined up. You can't really see it. We'll see when we take the clamps off. It's right here. We'll see when we take the clamps off. So, whew, uh, that's it for this uh, installment or episode. So on the next installment, we'll be gluing on uh, side supports. We'll be making those thin strips for the sides, uh, the kerfling, and uh, That'll probably be it for the next episode, but I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you all next time.